By the end of this video, you will have an understanding of how to make a state machine using Unity and C Sharp. For the best tips and tricks on game programming and game development, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I post new videos every Monday. If you are already a subscriber, thank you. It really means the world to me. My name is George Wolfers and I'm a professional game developer. Let me guide you on your game development journey. Be sure to watch this video to the end to find out how you can get more free learning resources. Step number one, what is a state machine? A state machine is a mathematical model of computation. This state machine can be in exactly one state at any given time, which is also known as a finite state machine or FSM for short. Based on the current state and a given input, the machine performs a transition and produces outputs. Because of this, they can be used in many autonomous applications. Step number two, creating a simple state machine. All right, guys, so let's open up our Unity project and let's go over, go into the scripts folder and gameplay and we're going to be working inside of the enemies folder. Um, we're going to be creating a folder here called FSM for finite state machine. Um, and inside that folder, we are going to be creating a script. Um, and this one is, we're going to name it stalker because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a AI that uses a finite state machine that has several states and one of those states is going to be a chase player state okay so yeah let's open it up All right, so once again, it's a lot, but uh, most of it is uh, things that we've already seen um, from the basic enemy from last week. Uh, so we are going to be needing to get access to the player um, since we are going to be doing the same thing, uh, being able to jump on top of him or on the sides and take damage or deal damage like the basic enemy from before. Uh, so here we have our states and we're gonna have idle, which he's just gonna be standing there. We're gonna have walking, which he's gonna be following the path. And then we're gonna have chase chase player, or I guess we should, we should call it chase target instead. And um, rename and uh, then die and that's pretty much it so most of this is from from here on up is the same thing from the previous video um, so we have a path to follow we have our current points we have our boolean to see if we're alive or not we have our speed distance to the point and the arrive threshold the new stuff is the states, the current state that we're in, and the target transform, which is going to be whatever it's trying to kill, um, and the sensing distance, which is going to be how far from the player, or, or how far from the enemy you have to be in order for it to know that you're there and start following you. And then we have this idle 
coroutine, uh, coroutine variable that we keep track of if we have started our coroutine or not. Um, we're going to be doing everything inside of the fixed update as we've been doing before. Um, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check to see if uh, we're dead and if the current state is not dead. That means that we have to change our state to be dead. And that's pretty simple. And then if we're alive and if we have a target, then we're going to check the distance to the target and see if it's less than or equal to the sensing distance. If it is, we're going to change our our state to chase that uh, target. If not, if we are over that distance and if we are chasing the target currently, that means we lost it. We don't know where it went. So we're going to go back to idle so it can think. It's like, mm, okay, what's happening there? And so here, this is our pretty much our state machine, uh, this switch statement that based on our states, our current state, we're going to do some actions or we're going to process some data. So the first one is going to be, let's look at the idle state. Um, so we're going to start the coroutine and we're going to give it five uh, seconds. So we're just going to be standing there for five seconds doing nothing until that timer's up. Once it's done, we're going to change our state to walk. And then in the walk state, uh, it's pretty much the same thing as the basic enemy right here the only difference is that we're gonna every time we reach a point we're gonna stay there for five seconds and then we're gonna move on okay and oh, I guess we're here so that's pretty self-explanatory uh, the next one is going to be the chase player which we're just going to lerp our position into from where we are to where we want to go, which is the target transform position. Uh, but we're going to be doing it faster because we're trying to catch the player. And we're going to have a die state here. The end. Uh, and we're just going to be destroying the game object. And... Uh, this is t this tells it how how long does it have to like how many seconds do you need to wait until it actually destroys it um, and you can see right here it just removes it, a game object component or asset uh, optional amount of time to delay before destroying the object and that's pretty much it. And we also have our collision. Oop, did not mean to do that. We have our collision here, um, which does the same thing, except it does not destroy the enemy. Um, and let's just do here. We'll just change it to that. Um, and we're also drawing the debug stuff. I hope everything is making sense so far. If you have any questions or if you have any issues, leave those in the comments below and I'll get you get back to you soon. Step number three, testing. All right, so let's go into Unity. Let's compile everything and let's create that enemy. So let's go into the create menu, go to 2D object, sprite, and whoop, we're going to name it stalker. The sprite will be the same one. 
we're just going to change the color to red and it's going to be a tiled and it's going to be 0.5.5 for the width and the height then we're going to add a box collider 2d and I'm going to make sure it fits the sprite properly. And we're going to bring it down here. And we are going to put this there. So we're going to have two points as well. So let's copy these and uh, bring them over here. We're going to copy the, uh, make sure that the Z is zero. Uh, the Y we got to copy from the enemy and put it on these objects. And we're just going to name them point 0.2 and point 0.3. And we're going to leave it there, leave some, some room for the player to jump into it. And there. So then we just have to make sure that we have point 0.2 and point 0.3 in here. Uh, we're going to set the speed to be 0 0.5. Um, everything else is fine, except that now we have to add the player into here. So there's a couple of ways that we could have done that. Um, we could have done a ray cast depending on what direction you were going um, the enemy was traversing or traveling in and then we could have just did a, a ray cast and see um, if we hit the player or not and then based on that um, we have to cache that into a variable and then use it and stuff like that. Um, I don't think we want to go that route in this game because it's going to be more complex. It's not going to be necessarily more expensive to do it because relatively raycasts are they tend to be pretty cheap if I'm thinking about it correctly. Um, but just the managing of that variable is going to uh, add more work to us, which I don't want to do. <laughs> so we're just going to make sure that every enemy knows where the player is, but based on the radius, um, they're going to pretend that they don't see the enemy until, I mean the player, until they get too close to it. I think that's a better approach to what we're trying to do since it's less complicated and we have to manage less things. Um, and that's always a plus in my book. Okay, so now we have everything ready for the enemy. So let's zoom out a little bit here so we can see everything. Um, we're just going to go there so we can see everything a little bit like that. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, play it. And let's kill this enemy. And let's go over here. Let's just wait for it. There's coming. So now you can see that it's trying to follow us. It's kind of like uh, Super Mario's ghost, except he doesn't stop when we look at it because we don't have that sense, I guess. But you can see that if you're looking at the oops at the current states, <laughs> we just killed ourselves. Um, you can see that the state machine is working. Um, we just can't ru oh, um, outrun this guy. 
Um, maybe we can add a sense of hiding behind objects or something. Um, I don't know what we want to do, but we can see that, um, I don't know if you guys saw that, but it also works the same, where if he, um, let's just let him come towards us and uh, hit us. So you can see how that's working. Um, let's make sure that we have it there. So it's an idle right now, and then it's gonna walk, and then it's gonna see us, and it's gonna, boop, kick us until whatever, and then we kill it, and it dies. And that's pretty much how it works. It's a pretty simple AI. Um, so there's a couple of ways that we can implement a finite state machine. And today we looked at one, which is using a switch uh, statement. This is the most basic finite state machine you can ever write. Um, another way of writing this, which we will implement, is going to be through object oriented. Uh, we're going to create base classes for each state, and then we're going to inherit those and create our separate states like that. Um, and um, it, it's not really better or worse, um, but it might let us, it might contain everything you know, into their own files so that when we, we only, so that not, we don't have like, you know, all kinds of mess here. Um, another thing that we have to implement um, that we've seen already, uh, we used a lot of code from basic enemy. We just copied and pasted it and we used it in here. So that tells us that this is something that we're gonna want to package into a base class or uh, some of the functionality might also be um, packaged into an interface that we can inherit from so that we don't have to rewrite it every time we want to use it. We can just inherit uh, Stalker or whatever other enemy uh, from those base classes or interfaces that we want to implement. Usually an interface is an abstract thing, so maybe we'll just stick to our base class so it has some functionality already, so we don't have to rewrite it, because technically with an interface you would have to rewrite it. Um, but, but, yeah, we'll be looking at that in this series, so stay tuned for that. Congratulations! Now you know how to make a state machine using Unity and C Sharp. If you would like to follow along, I have provided a link to our project in the description below. And don't forget to also get our free guide where we explain in detail more about state machines. And don't forget to go to our Facebook page and say hello. We'd love to hear from you. Check out these other videos next on how to make games using Unity. And if you like this video, hit that like button and be sure to subscribe and share this with your friends. Thanks for watching and see you next week.